Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So here I am, again, attempting to do wrap-up videos. I basically ignored everyone's suggestions and I'm attempting to do a monthly one again. I don't know why I think this is gonna work, but here I am, like the brave little toaster, trying to chug along with my booktube dreams. So, in the month of January, I read 21 books. That right there is a big part of why I don't do monthly wrap-ups because I read a lot. 20 to 30 books is about average for me. I know that's a lot of books for a lot of people, but that's about what I average every month. So it's very hard to do that many books justice in a reasonably length video. So I just kind of gave up on doing monthly wrap-ups. But here I am <laughs> attempting yet again, mainly because I've seen the trend change in wrap-up styles instead of booktubers discussing books in the order that they read them, they are starting to discuss them in the ratings that they gave them. So you start with your least liked book of the month and you work your way up to your most liked book. That seems fun. I want to do that. So wish me luck. I think this is going to be okay. We'll see how this goes. It could be like a hot dumpster fire by the end of this video. Without further ado, let's get into the 21 books that I read in the month of January in the order that I liked them. So starting with my least liked, I am starting with A Promise of Fire by Amanda Boucher, or Bouchette. I think they actually said Bouchette in the audiobook version, but I want to say Boucher because it sounds bougie. But this is a book that I wanted to love so much. I have learned about myself, especially in the fantasy world, that I'm a character-driven reader, which is rare for fantasy books. Most fantasy books, especially in high fantasy, tends to lean towards plot-driven, and I understand that. I can appreciate that. But I'm slowly learning that my taste is definitely character driven and like relationship driven, not necessarily romance. It can be friendship. It can be found family, anything like that. So this book had all of the buzzwords that make me grab a book. This book started in a carnival setting. This book has a lot of sexy time in it. I'm going to read that. This book has a lot of kind of found family elements in it. It's also set in a world that the magic system deals a lot with gods and demigods, which is not necessarily a buzzword for me, but I was intrigued to see how they wove it in. This is also one of those books that pops up a lot when I see people looking for recommendations um, that are similar to Sarah J Mass, specifically her new adult-ish type stories. Basically fantasy with sex in it, okay? I'm gonna be blunt. That's what I was looking for going into this. So this book had the makings to be something that I would gush over. I would love this book. I would devour this book and it had all of those elements in it. But the one thing that I just could not get past with this story is the kind of dismissal of consent, which kind of ruins the sexy times. It kind of ruins the relationship building because the line of consent was blurred through most of this book. If they had just set up the romance in a different way, I would have been on board 100%. But the basis of the romantic relationship in this story is the fact that the love interest kidnaps this woman because she holds a lot of power and he wants to basically drag her back to his kingdom that he is kind of building from the ground up. So not only is he like demanding that she goes with him and she doesn't have a choice, he is physically tying her to him. Like they are bound by this magical rope and there's a lot of sexual tension, but all of the sexual tension is told to us through our protagonist's internal monologue. So we see that she's okay with the stuff that's happening, but he doesn't see her internal thoughts. So he does not see that she is okay with all of the really forceful, really aggressive sexual advances that he makes on her. And it just didn't sit well with me. I just couldn't get past it. Had they started on any other foot for this relationship, I probably would have been on board. It just didn't fly with me. And I feel like that's something that some people might be into because it kind of touches on like Stockholm syndrome stuff, like hostage kidnapper, which is some people's kink. That's cool. That's valid if you're real into that, but it just did not sit well with me personally. So I gave this two stars. The first three star book that I have is Air Awakens by Elise Kova. This is another one of those fantasy stories that had all of the makings of what I should love in a fantasy story, but it just didn't like deliver the way that I wanted it to. This deals with elemental magic, which is something that I will always grab for, specifically because I grew up watching Avatar The Last Airbender. And that is why this book only got three stars for me, because I feel like this book was such a rip off of that. And that's something that I don't want to say I couldn't get past it, but it was something that was in the back of my mind the entire time that I was reading it. So this is definitely set up where there are different, um, magic wielders in these kingdoms who can wield different elements. 
and the element that has been missing for the past couple centuries is air. And our main character is the last found wind airbender. I forget what they even called it in this, to be honest, but it was so parallel to Avatar that I just couldn't, like, if it had been any other element that had been missing from the kingdom, I probably would have been fine with it, but it was the fact that they made airbenders the, like, sought after missing element for so long, I was just like, oh, come on. Everything else was fine. The relationships were fine. It didn't wow me, but it held my attention. It was very fast. It's more of a new adult fantasy series. It gets a little bit more mature. Our characters are like older teens into their 20s. So I may continue with the series just to see where it goes because I did enjoy reading it, but it just stop being Avatar, okay? The next book that I got to that was a three star is What If It's Us by Becky Albertalli and Adam Silvera. And this wasn't terrible. That's a great start to a review. Um, okay, so I had high hopes going into this because I adore Becky and Adam. I think they are so precious in real life. I adore both of their books, like, separately. So I was really excited when they were gonna come together and write a, like, queer, adorable, meet-cute romance. That sounds like the makings of something amazing. This book, I liked it. I didn't love it, though. I feel like Adam's perspective in his writing, where he writes very real and raw situations and relationships where they're not all fluffy romance, rainbows, and magic, um, he keeps everything very grounded and very real to what relationships are actually like. And Becky tends to add a lot of, like, sass and snark and fun dialogue and kind of cutesy romances. So I was curious to see how this was going to mesh. And in my opinion, it wasn't great. Um, I feel like it was a little bit long for what the story ultimately came out to be. It was a lot of very real relationship drama. But what didn't sit well with me is the fact that this is kind of advertised as a meet cute. It follows two boys who meet at a post office while one is trying to ship away a box of his ex-boyfriend's belongings. And it was just, it was an adorable meet cute and I feel like they kind of set up the groundwork for a really cute romance, but they brought it back to being a very real relationship where they both are kind of awkward, they don't really know how to be in a relationship with each other and a lot of cringy situations happen, which is real. That's true to real life relationships, but that's not necessarily what I want to read for the entire book, if that makes sense. Like, I liked that it was a very real representation of like young dating, but it was like, I wanted a little bit more cute and less real, if that makes sense. So this one, I gave it three stars. I still am very curious to see what they both do together in the future, if they're gonna write together in the future, but for me, kind of missed the mark. The next book that I want to talk about is The Wish Granter by C.J. Redwine. This is book two in the Ravenspire series. I actually don't know how long it's gonna be. I'm just gonna say series. You don't actually have to read any of these books in order. I think they read well as standalones. This is a very loose Rumpelstiltskin retelling, and I'm always intrigued by that because that's one of the darkest fairy tales that is not done very often when it comes to retelling, so I'm always intrigued by it. This series, it's fun. I think it's kind of underhyped for what it is. I actually think it is pretty unique when it comes to YA fantasy series, but it's just missing something. Like, I couldn't even tell you what I didn't like about it to give it only a three star other than it didn't wow me, if that makes sense. So I've read that. The next five books that I want to mention that I'm just going to kind of lump in an average rating of three stars is the entire Lux series. I just randomly reread this entire series. I've been on a rereading kick recently, and this is honestly one of my favorite guilty pleasure paranormal romance series, and I just wanted to see if it held up. And it kind of did, mainly because I feel like the first time I read it, I wasn't blown away by it. Like, this series doesn't take itself too seriously. Like, it kind of mocks its own tropes within it. I love Jennifer L. Armitrout. Her writing is like candy for me. It's very easy to read. It's very easy to get addicted to it and just fly through all of her books. So... I reread all of these, all five of these, and I, I'm gonna average all of the ratings to about three stars just because I really like them, but they're nothing spectacular. But a big part of why I actually did reread those is because I wanted to read The Darkest Star, which is her newest release, and this is a new spin-off series from that series, and this follows characters that we meet in the Lux series, but this takes place a couple years later when they have grown up and they are now kind of in the protagonist love interest age range, which I was really intrigued by because Luke, who is our main character in this, or actually Evie is technically our main character, the love interest in this, 
is one of my favorite characters from the Lux series. He was one of the most intriguing characters that you feel like you were missing something from, like you didn't get his full story and we're starting to get it and I kind of love it. I ultimately gave this three stars as well. The only thing that I didn't like about this is the direction she took a character from the Lux series that I was so interested in and I'm, I can't say anything more than that without spoiling it because it honestly would spoil this entire book. It would spoil your impression of them in the first series. I just didn't like where she went with the one character. That's all I'm gonna say. And for that reason, I gave it three stars, mainly because I had really high hopes for that character to have their own spinoff series and it just didn't go that direction. So there you go. Thoughts on this one. The next book I'm going to talk about, a lot of you guys have been waiting to hear my thoughts on it, and I'm, I don't know, I feel bad about this because I feel like I've been really critical of this book, but that is Slayer. Oh, hang on, this is, hold on, one sec. I have a finished copy to hold up now because I did actually get the Barnes & Noble edition. You guys always ask um, if, when I get ARCs, if I do actually end up purchasing the book. If it's a book that I really want and I really like, I generally do because I like to support the author. Um, so I will hold up this fancy version. So thoughts on this one. I was disappointed. I've seen reviews all over the place with this. I went in, unfortunately, with high hopes. I tried really hard to not build up anticipation for this just because Buffy, the entire Buffy world is like my most deep rooted fandom. I have been a part of that fandom since before I knew the word fandom. Like I have been so into this world since I was probably like 10 or 11. So I have a deep love running for this world and I worry when things come into it and could taint it. And I feel like, I don't want to say that this tainted that world, but I just wasn't impressed with what they're doing with it, which is a disappointment because I love Kirsten White. I love her writing. I love her as a person. And I was really excited to see that she was the one who was doing this because she does get really dark with her stories, which in theory, while Buffy is kind of like a jokey, laughy, 90s poppy show, it has some really dark and really heavy undertones to it. And maybe the series will get there because this is only book one and this is only the setup for it. But this just ultimately was not great as a whole. Like even separating my love of Buffy from it, I don't think this stood on its own as its own introduction to a series or as its own story. A lot of this book was info dumping what has happened from the end of the show up until this point. And a lot of that info dumping is bashing Buffy. And I feel like if you're gonna try to appeal to fans of Buffy, you probably shouldn't throw the main character of the beloved show under the bus. And uh, that's what a lot of this book does. And I mean, it ultimately, like, the viewpoints change as the story progresses, but it was just not... It rubbed me the wrong way, because I was like, stop trashing Buffy, okay? She did a lot. We love her, okay? Just let her be. Let her be her own little queen. She did her own world saving multiple times. Let her live her own life now. Things that I did like about this, I feel like the dialogue did stay true to the show. It's a very witty, very snarky type of dialogue that fits in with the show. So I feel like that stuck true, and it felt like we were establishing our own Scooby gang. Um, but what I didn't like is that it was just slow moving. It was, there was almost no action scenes. Like I can think of maybe two to three scenes where like fighting happened. And that's a huge part of Buffy. We all liked watching Buffy because of all of the like kick-ass female fighting scenes that we got. And there was not much in this. Um, we do see Faith and we do see Buffy in this. So their voices are in there and I feel like they stay very true to the show. And there are a lot of Easter eggs that are dropped in this that if you are a diehard fan of the show, they're just like one-liners that just kind of show up and you would recognize and you would understand the reference, but maybe everyone else doesn't. So it felt special in that way, but it ultimately was just kind of a boring story. I feel like it didn't need to be this long. I feel like a lot of what happened could have been summed up. I wanted more vampires in it. There had it, there was a demon, which yes, there are a lot of demons that are in Buffy, but for it being a vampire slayer driven story, I feel like there should have been vampires in it more often and there weren't. So I'm picking this book apart way too much now. Those are just my thoughts, thinking back to my reading experience. It's ultimately a three star for me. The next book I wanna talk about is Warrior of the Wild by Trisha Levenseller. Um, this does, is this already out? 
This comes out in February. It might already be out by the time you're watching this video. I discussed this in my releases video if you want a more in-depth um, synopsis of what this story is about. It's basically a Viking-inspired fantasy story with a really kick-ass female protagonist who kind of gets tossed out from her village and has to learn how to fend for herself in the wilds. Viking-inspired mythology, but it deals a lot with their spirituality and belief systems, which I thought was really interesting to see in a book like this. Um, this is a standalone, which is satisfying, and I had a blast reading it. I definitely recommend picking this up if that's at all interesting to you. I love Viking-inspired stories, so this is definitely one that fits the bill. The next book that I want to talk about is An Anonymous Girl by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekkanen. This is an adult thriller that deals with the line of morality when it comes to social testing. Basically, this follows a woman who is taking part in a, like, morality and ethics anonymous survey and that survey starts to progress further as she gets selected further and further into this testing situation. So we follow her perspective, but we also follow the perspective of the professor who is giving this test. And one thing that I really liked about this book is our main character that we're following from who is taking the test, it is told in third person like normal, but all of the chapters that are told from the professor's perspective are in second person. So they're talking directly to you like you are the main character who is taking this test. So it's a lot of like, you answered this question this way. You sat down and you looked uncomfortable in the room. So it's reminiscent of the book You, which was really interestingly done. I actually really like that take because it kind of made you feel uncomfortable while you were reading it, which kind of builds the atmosphere of the book. Ultimately, I gave it three stars. I feel like it went on for a little bit longer. I feel like once the twist starts to unravel, which is honestly maybe like a third of the way into the book, like you start to uncover what's actually going on pretty early on into the story, it starts to just kind of build tension as it goes because you're getting more and more wrapped up in this situation that's not great. So I was very anxious for a majority of this reading experience, which I don't sit well with, but it was done really well. So I gave this three stars. The next two books that I want to talk about are Ignite Me, which is the third book in the Shatter Me series, and then Restore Me, which is like the fourth book of like this new installment into the series. I read Shatter Me and Unravel Me back in December, so this has kind of been a continuation of this read for me, and I'm gonna be honest, I'm real invested in this series now. When I was reading the first and second book, I was like, okay, this is all right. It's like a two or three star dystopian read from like back in the day. Now I am so invested in it. And the ending of Restore Me, I can't wait for the next one. Now I'm in the same boat as everybody else in the world where I actually am caught up and I actually like need to know what happens because we left it on a cliffhanger of information that got dumped on us and I was like, what? Because these are books three and four in a series, I'm not really gonna discuss anything about it because spoilers, hello. But I did give both of these three stars. I'm invested. I'm hooked on this series now. Her writing is still actually really good. I really enjoy her writing style. It's very unique to the YA voice, but I can't wait for the next one. Moving on. Okay, moving into four star books. We're gonna try and like get this moving along. So the first four star book that I have to talk about is Fallen Kingdoms by Morgan Rhodes. Um, this was part of a buddy read that I did with Kayla over at Literature Reads, which I'll leave linked down below. She's got a YouTube channel. Go check her out, give her some love. But this was a really fun buddy read. Like. I really enjoyed talking with her this entire time. This is also a backlist fantasy series that I've had sitting on my shelf for way too long, so I'm really glad that we're picking it up and working our way through it. So this is book one, and this was a pleasant surprise. Considering that this is a somewhat older YA fantasy release, this is dark and this is pretty brutal. It wasn't what I expected from old school YA fantasy. This is like a YA Game of Thrones. Like we met a lot of characters, a lot of characters murdered other characters. A lot of characters were sleeping with other characters. It was a fun ride. Like, I was real into it by the end of it. As soon as I kind of got everybody figured out, that was the only issue that I had was, like, keeping everybody straight for the first half of the book because it switches perspectives a lot. Once I got that down, I'm on board, and I can't wait to see what happens with these characters. It was dark. That's my cup of tea. I was down with it, so I gave it four stars. <laughs> the next book I want to talk about is 180 Seconds by Jessica Park. This is a new adult romance uh, book that actually was pleasantly surprising to me. For some reason it shows up as a recommended book to me a lot, so I eventually gave in and I read it. Good job marketing. So this is New Adult, so this is following a girl who is in college who is suffering from really severe anxiety. So that's something that will make me grab a book. Anxiety rep is a buzzword for me in all genres, and I like seeing it in this one. It was a very healthy representation of what it's like to get stuck in cycles like that. But the basic premise of this is that it 
follows a girl who is just struggling to get through college and struggling to get through life with really severe anxiety and she gets dragged into this weird social experiment with this really attractive guy where they just kind of want to see the human connection that can happen if you have to make eye contact with another person, a stranger, for 180 seconds. She does this and she kind of goes through a roller coaster of emotions and ends the 180 seconds by like ferociously making out with this guy. And it kind of gives you that like love at first sight type of vibe, which is a trope that I can get down with. I'm not gonna lie, I'm into that sometimes. And it follows their relationship because she is so uncomfortable with being put on the spot like that and she is so uncomfortable with the emotions that she showed that she wasn't planning on showing and it follows their relationship as it progresses. It was so good and it was so well done. It was just a really fun read. I listened to it in one day. The next book that I wanna talk about is Poison Study by Maria V. Snyder. I've been wanting to get to her books for so, so long because I feel like it's right up my alley and I was right. So this is a character driven fantasy story that I can get down with. I gave it four stars. This is basically following a girl who is on death row, but basically escapes execution. And she is brought on to be a food tester for a like higher up commander person. Um, so she is taught the art of poison tasting, which is done. I, okay. I don't want to bring hate by bringing these two fandoms together because they're pretty intense on their own, but the learning process that she went through of detecting different types of poisons and how they affect her was very reminiscent to Vin learning how all of the different metals worked in Mistborn. Just gotta leave that out there and then retract into my hole and hope that nobody kills me by comparing these two stories. But I think they're both pretty beloved stories, so I think that's okay. I just really liked that process. I really like the like learning process so that you can like understand the magic system with the main character. I like seeing that in fantasy stories, but this is very much a character driven and a like found family driven fantasy story that was done so, so well. My only qualm with it is there was not enough romance. Like there was some romance, but it just kind of like kept getting brushed aside and I was like, bring on the sex. Come on, give me some more. So I'm hoping that we get more in the future books because I'm going to continue on with it and I'm pretty invested in the story now. The next book I want to talk about is Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. I devoured this book. This was the most lovable love story I've read in such a long time. This is basically a like second chance love situation. It follows like a couple who like kind of were a couple when they were teenagers, something happened that drove them apart, and then they meet up again like 11 years later and they are rekindling the love. And basically Elliot, our love interest in this book, is the type of character that makes all real life boyfriends look like crap. He is the epitome of the book boyfriend that everybody wants but will never actually get. It's one of these stories, so if that's something that bothers you, maybe avoid this one, but I just swooned my way through this entire book. I loved them. I loved their relationship and how they interacted. It was four stars. I really, I love this book. The next book that I want to talk about is my last four star read that's pushing a five star, but your guys are, might be disappointed that it's not a five star. That is Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. This is the sequel and conclusion to the Strange the Dreamer duology. I loved this. Her writing is unlike anything that has graced the book world in many a generation. This is obviously the sequel, so I can't really discuss much about it without it spoiling things. I feel like at this point most people know who Laszlo and Sarai are at this point, so I guess mini tiny spoiler. Their relationship was precious. Like, I adored their relationship from start to finish. I adored Minya. Minya, I think, is one of my favorite characters that I've ever read about. She was just such a complex character that I didn't expect to feel so many emotions toward through the entire progression of this. Um, Nova and Korra was, like, the coolest addition from book one to this one and everything revolving them. Okay, I don't know how to discuss this book without spoiling book one, so I loved it. I didn't love it as much as the first one because I feel like what I loved about this world was the setup and the introduction to all of it and all of its complexities. And I feel like everything was pretty much established in this book and we were just progressing it and kind of uncovering things as we went. And it was not as exciting to me as book one. That being said, this duology is one of the most well-written duologies 
in existence, in my opinion. Okay, rounding this out with my very last book that is a five-star book. It's the only five-star book that I read in the month of January. That is The Wicker King by Kay Ankrum. I read this as a huge, like, group book club read with Mel and Amy at um, Dragons and Tea Book Club, which is the book club that they started. This is the first month in the first book that we read, and they started out, like, with a bang. This book was phenomenal, but it's very polarizing. I feel like people either love it or they hate it. I was on the loving it side. I think it was really well written and like very uniquely done. This basically follows a relationship between two boys that starts as a very deep friendship and kind of evolves further than that as one of them basically sees hallucinations. He sees a world on top of our world and he has a harder and harder time differentiating what is real and what's not. But in this fantasy world, his best friend is a key player in this world and they have to like work together to kind of navigate through his fantasy storyline along with his mental illness storyline. And this is that book that I always talk about where the pages get darker and darker as he gets further and further into his madness. The relationships were so complex in such a short amount of time. But the relationships in this were so dense and so dark and raw and primal for a YA book. And it was just done in such a way that like it wasn't explicit, but it was present and you were aware of what was happening between these two because it was very much a like dependency type of relationship between the one boy and the other. And it was, there were some power dynamics between them that you don't explore in YA. It was, mm, this book, if you are curious about it, give it a try because it's worth it. Okay, you might hate it, but you might also love it. Okay, that's the end of this video. Whew, I'm exhausted. That was a lot of talking. I don't really need to give you much of an outro because this video is already really long. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments what you guys read in the month of January, and I'll see you guys in my next video.